We are taking these bone conduction headphones that I've had for over a year now and comparing them to these open ear headphones that they've been getting more and more popular. My goal is really simple. I wanna find out which is the most comfortable, which will sound better, test the different controls, the features, and help you guys decide which is the right ones for you. I'm at the track right now. It's about 11 a.m. And something that you guys should know is all these products, all these headphones, they're bought by me. So this video is completely unbiased, but I have them right here with me. To start off, if portability is like a top priority for you, then you might want to consider leaning towards these open ear design because they're going to often come in pocket friendly cases. These are the Shox Open Fit. They're one of my personal favorites, but just like look at this, not just this, but this is one from All Events. They're so pocket friendly, they're pocketable if that's a word. Like they could fit in any gym bag, in any travel bag, in any of those pockets. Now if I had shorts that had pockets, which I don't, but if I did, they would fit in those as well. Whereas bone conduction headphones, mm -mm, that's not really the case. They usually come with larger cases and you can't fit them even in like these smaller pockets in a gym bag or in a travel bag. When it comes to the comfort and how well they stay securely in place, the bone conduction headphones take the crown. They have this springy design that wraps around your head, providing you a secure fit without it being obtrusive. So I wore this during my last marathon, and by the way, if you're new here, know that I'm not a fast runner. So I had them on for nearly five hours, and I could barely notice they were there. I'm warming up one mile before I get started on this track workout, but I give these, out of everything else that's out there, like a 10 out of 10 when it comes to how secure of a fit it is. Now, not saying that open ear headphones are bad, not at all. They're like an 8 out of 10. They still work great. They're more secure than earbuds, just not as secure as these, as bone conduction headphones. That's a wrap on today's workout. Now, I know not everyone's getting these for fitness. In fact, if you're using it for something else, then I want to share an important drawback that I found after using them for a few months. You might notice that these tend to move when you have any kind of headrest. Whereas the open ear headphones, they don't have that loop behind your head that binds them, so you're not gonna run into any issues there. Now, this next part is gonna help you decide which one's best for you because when it comes to media controls, if you like more of that digital touch, open ear design will probably be the right ones for you. But if you prefer more of the like actual buttons, then you might wanna go with the bone conduction headphones. So for me personally, after using both of these for a few months, I still prefer the actual buttons, but that's subjective. By the way, I know we're moving pretty fast. So if you want a detailed look on any of these, there's gonna be video links in the description that I've made. I've shared this before, but from my experience, anything with a digital touch on these open ears just feels less responsive. Just watch this. One, one, two, three. There's that little delay. Turn on Do Not Disturb. For me, this is only an issue when I'm exercising. So that's either running or cycling, because I just tend to skip songs a lot. So that's why in this area, I lean personally a little bit more with bone conduction headphones. I noticed that all of them have actual buttons right here. And to me, that makes it more, not just reliable, but it also feels way more responsive because of this. Is that having these buttons, it just feels like there's less of a learning curve than the digital touch. It's pretty straightforward. Like I'll just show you. No, try them on. Try them on. There's a little test. <laughs> I never put these on before. I don't know how to change them. Trick the hearing out though. I clicked a button here. I don't know what it does. One minute later. Try skipping a song. If your concern is battery life, well, this is the easiest way I know how to put it. If you want a longer overall time, then the open ear design gives you that because of the case. But if you want longer sessions of listening time, you're kind of better off with bone conduction headphones. There is an exception and that's these. The Aladdin's Pro, 
I've had them for two months and they're giving me like 16 hours of listening time. If you use the case, it's kind of mind blowing, but then it gives you 96 hours. Let me know if you guys want a full review on this, I'll make one, put that down in the comments. But in conclusion, an overview is if you're looking for the most secure fit, I would go with the Open Run Pro. If you're looking for the best sound, I would go with the Oladense Pro. If you guys are looking for like the most diverse pair, I would get the Shox Open Fit. If you guys are looking for budget friendly headphones, then I'll attach the ones that I got from Amazon down below. This video was pretty fast paced. There's still a lot more that I could talk about. I didn't even touch on apps for any of these. So if you guys want a part two, let me know. But meanwhile, here's a video that you guys could watch on the pros and cons of bone conduction headphones. And here's a playlist on the best fitness earbuds and headphones. You guys could give that a watch. But I'm gonna go ahead and work out and I'll see you guys in next week's video.